In this lecture, we're going to continue our discussion on the relationship between electric fields and magnetic fields. Recall in a previous lecture that we said that a current carrying wire will create a magnetic field. In other words, electrons moving through a wire will create a magnetic field. So let's look at the following illustration. Suppose we have a long wire and this wire is allowed to carry electrons. And electrons travel in this general direction. And that means by convention our current will be in the opposite direction going this way. Now we already saw that the direction of our magnetic field can be found by using a right hand rule. And this right hand rule tells us that if we take our thumb and point it in the direction of our current, that our magnetic field must be going in this direction. So our magnetic field around our wire are simply concentric circles going this way. So what happens if I take a magnet and place it next to my uh, wire? Well, the magnet will feel a force and this force will be due to the current carried in this wire. In other words, a current moving through a wire will exert a force on a magnet. Now we saw that in a previous lecture. Now I want to ask the following question. Is the reverse true? Is the converse true? In other words, can a magnet exert a force on our current in the wire? And the answer is yes. Experimentally, scientists said that this is true. And they used the following experiment to detect the force. They took a battery and connected that to a circuit and they allow electrons to flow from our anode to our cathode in this direction. That means our current must be by convention in the opposite direction. And then they took a magnet like a horseshoe magnet which had a north pole and a south pole. And they put the magnet into the wire so that the magnetic fields created by the uh, magnet were exposed to the wire and they were able to detect a force on that wire. Now the magnitude of the force we'll talk about in a second. First let's talk about the direction of that force. The direction of that force is perpendicular, is at a 90 degree angle to both direction of our current and direction of the mag magnetic field produced by my magnet. Once again, <coughs> a magnet will exert a force on a current carrying wire on this red wire. <coughs> the direction of the force is perpendicular to both direction of current which is going into our board and the uh, direction of the magnetic field B. So if our direction is going this way uh, due to the magnetic field our force is perpendicular to that as well. And to find our direction we have to use another version of the right hand rule. And this version can help us find our direction, not the magnitude, only direction. So we take our hand and we point this hand in the direction of our electric current. So our direction is going into our board, that means we point it this way. And then we curl our hand in the direction of our magnetic field. Since our magnetic field is going this way, we must twist our hand and point this way. And then we extend our thumb and the thumb points in the direction of our force. And that means our force must be downward. Our wire feels a force going downward. Now imagine we reverse these two half cells. And now this guy was our anode and this guy was our cathode. So our electrons would travel in this direction and that means our current would be moving in this direction. So now let's use the right hand rule to see what the force should point or the direction of the force. So if you take your hand, that means our current is going out of the board. So it's going this way. And our magnetic field is still going from north to south. So our magnetic field is going this way, and now we point our thumb up, and our thumb points in the direction of our force. So our force now points up and not down. So if our current was moving this way, the force that the wire would feel would point in the direction of upward. So now we spoke about how to find our direction. Let's talk about how to find the magnitude or the amount of force that our wire feels due to this magnet. 
In order to find the magnitude or amount of force produced by our magnet on our wire carrying our current, we have to use the above equation. So force is equal to bill times sine theta, where B is our magnitude of our magnetic field, I is our current carried in our wire, L is the length of wire exposed to our magnetic field, and theta is simply the angle between our wire and the magnetic field lines. So now let's look at the aerial or top to bottom view of our experimental setup. And we get the following illustration, where this guy is this north pole, this guy is the south pole, and this wire is simply this wire in the middle. Now we're going to make the assumption that the angle between the, uh, this wire and this magnetic field line is 90. So they're perpendicular to one another. We're also going to make the assumptions that at the edges our field lines don't curve. That they go directly from this north pole to this south pole in a straight line. Now, what happens when our angle is 90 degrees? Well, if we want to find our force that this magnet exerts on this line, on this wire, we have to use this formula. And if our angle is 90 degrees, our sine 90 simply becomes 1. So, our formula for force is simply force equals bill, or, ma or our magnetic field times our current that's being carried through this wire times L. Now notice L is not the length of the entire circuit. L is simply the length from here to here. It's the length of our wire that's <coughs> actually exposed to our magnetic field. So if we know these guys, we can find our force. Now notice what happens as my angle becomes smaller, smaller than 90. Well, as I rotate my wire this way, my angle becomes smaller and smaller. And that means this is no longer 1, but it's smaller than 1. And when my angle becomes 0, when my wire is directly parallel to my magnetic field lines, sine of 0 goes to 0. It's sine of 0 is 0. So that means my force that this wire feels when the angle between my wire and my magnetic field is zero, the force is zero. It doesn't feel any force. But when my angle goes to 90, the force is at its maximum. So this represents the maximum force that this wire can feel with this amount of magnetic field lines or with this magnetic field. Now notice one more thing. Knowing this formula, we can now define our magnetic field in a second way. If we rearrange this equation, we get our magnetic field is equal to force divided by I times L times sine theta. Now that means if our theta is 90, this guy crosses out and we simply get magnetic field is equal to force divided by I times L. And that means the units of our magnetic field is simply newtons over amperes times meters, and this is known as Teslas.